Hi there, this is Johnny Miller from Point Blank Online Music School, back once more to show you some cool little tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from uh, clickproduce.com. Um, tonight I'm feeling kind of experimental and uh, I wanted to put together a little beat that had uh, a bit of a techno feel to it but also uh, a definite dub presence in there and um, I've been listening recently to some albums by some guys uh, called Rhythm and Sound and um, amazing sort of dub flavoured techno with a real kind of spacey haunting atmosphere to it and uh, really inspirational for me. So I've put a little beat together here with some 808 sounds uh, from Ableton's library, a kick, a rim shot and a hi-hat. Let me just play this little beat. And so this is 127 beats per minute. It's got the rim shot on beat three of the bar just to give it that dub feel. But using kind of electronic sounds and given all the sounds in terms of the programming quite a lot of swing. Not by way of groove, just by where I've actually programmed the notes in. Just to keep it a little bit different. And just three kick drums within the bar. So that's my beat, and I want to put alongside this some kind of electronic noises, not necessarily music, um, but more kind of background sort of texture and drone that I can add effects to and create little glitchy noises and kind of keep it very much electronic. And I've got a really good sound pack for this um, that I picked up recently, uh, Prime Loops Fatmospheres. And um, this is perfect because it's not really a sound library of drums and single samples. It's more two folders of uh, atmospheres or fatmospheres as they call it, drones and soundscapes. Quite interesting stuff. And if I play a few of them, they're quite long and um, they're just kind of ambient textures. Ideal for you to use maybe, you know, like I'm doing here in a more experimental track um, or in your breaks or intros for your dance tracks. So there's lots of things we can do with this stuff. And uh, they're all quite subtle, they're not really too in your face like a lot of other sample packs, which is one thing I quite like about them actually. And they're more kind of designed to sit underneath your other sounds in your track, as opposed to up front. There's lots of kind of, you know, dark atmospheric sounds. I found one that I want to use, uh, it's in here, it's number 19. And it's got these quite kind of odd haunting little electronic noises and squeaks and pops and bleeps and I quite like it. And I think it would work quite nicely alongside my beat. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to load this sample in here and I'm going to load onto this audio track some effects. I'm going to create a little rack that will uh, allow me to set up little delay feedback effects on this sample. The first thing I'm going to do is throw in an empty audio effects rack onto this track one where my uh, soundscape sample is at. And then I'm just going to go down here in the effects devices and find the simple delay. I'm just going to put a simple delay uh, in here and uh, turn off the sync function. And this will allow me to change the delay time in milliseconds as opposed to beat divisions, as opposed to round numbers, so to speak. So we don't get a delay every beat or every half beat. We get very, very small delays up to a, you know, a couple of hundred milliseconds. And I can change the value here um, for the left and right delay. And that's what simple delay is made up of, just two sing single delays, one left, one right. Um, now the trick comes from turning the feedback all the way up to 95% and the wet dry up to 100%. So what will happen is that when the signal passes through simple delay, we'll get a feedback loop. The affected signal will go out of the simple delay and then back in to the input. So we'll get like a never ending cycle of delays. Now when you play with feedback, you've got to be really, really careful in music software. So I'm going to load in a limiter device into this rack as well, just to make sure that any peaks, if the level gets too high, I'm not going to damage the speakers, I'm not going to kick the level up in this case if I just raise that up to 0 dB. Now that's called the ceiling. And so no signal will pass above 0 dBs now, which means that my master output is safe. So I'm just going to turn the beat off for a second. So I'm going to hit stop clips and put this uh, soundscape on. And now you can hear the delay. If I bring the wet dry down, that's the original sample. So I'm going to bring that wet dry up. 
and start to bring those delays in. Just going to turn it down on my computer. That's a little bit loud. There we go. And now I'm just going to change the delay time to create these very small electronic kind of glitchy. And because it's stereo, because it's left right, I can set different times for the left channel and the right channel and get some really, really interesting feedback effects. If the feedback gets too much, I can always bring it down a bit and start to get more of the original signal coming from the clip. Or turn the feedback up and get busy with the feedback effects. Now I'm just going to fine tune this rack a little bit and just open up the macro controls. And instead of me playing around with these value boxes here, I'm actually going to map those values to these macro pots here, which means that I can just work with a controller, I can assign those macro controls to pots on my uh, MIDI controller, and it just makes it a lot easier to work. So I'm going to hit map mode, and then just click on uh, the left time value and map that to macro 1, the right time value, map that to macro 2, and then I'm going to put the feedback on macro 3 come out of macro mode and now there we go as I move the feedback value you can see it moving on simple delay so I'm going to put that up at 100% and um, if I go back into map mode see at the top here we've got these minimum and maximum values well, I can actually now fine tune this let's say I don't want to go above maybe 200 mil uh, milliseconds around there anyway I can either uh, find the value with my mouse or I can actually click on the value and type in with my keyboard 200 milliseconds. So I'm going to do that. It's the easy way on both of those. And I'll set the minimum at uh, 10. Yeah, about 10 milliseconds. That's nice and simple. Um, and uh, that's a nice thing to do because it means that I've set those minimum and maximum values on those pots now so that when I come out of map mode, I can't actually take the, the pot further than 200 milliseconds. So my delay is never going to get too big. And I could just experiment getting different left and right values. Let's put the beat on and see how this sounds. Just going to turn the volume down a bit. And just sit this underneath my drums. This is what I wanted really. I think the last thing I'm going to do to this is add a high pass filter and so that the feedback effects are really high register, they're really kind of high filtered. Let's turn that up a bit now. And that'll just always add a nice little bit of flavor, bit of electronic flavor, glitchy flavor into the background of my beat. Okay, you can load loads of cool stuff like this at pointblankonline.net and I'll be back again next week to show you some more tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Peace.